In this video, I'm going to check out the Lynx Pro LH19 Thermal Monocular. Now this tool here is a game changer. Now how much of a game changer it is and how much it can help me for wildlife photography, that's what I'm going to find out in this video. To really test out this tool, let's start out by using it at nighttime. So let's wait until nightfall and go out and let's see what kind of animals I can find with this tool. I'm using the red light on my torch just so you can see me out here and I'm going to start exploring with the Hick Micro. I can hear an owl. You hear that? You can definitely hear an owl back here. We're doing the kind of classic tawny owl hooting uh, but I think that's an owl flying over here as well. So a little bit about the Lynx Pro LH19. It is 319 grams, so it's very light and small, so it's very easy to take with me. Now it's got an internal memory of eight gigabytes, and since the video and photos you can take with this doesn't take much space, because they're not, you know, it's not super definition, high quality video or photos, but that's not really what this tool is about. In fact, if I wasn't making this video to show to you guys, I might not even use the video or photo. It's more about just seeing what's there when I can't see it with my own eyes. It's got an IP63 weather rating. So you can take this out in a lot of different weather. It's got four buttons, which pretty much just kind of fits your fingers. So you're meant to hold it with each finger kind of on the button any time so you can use them. The top one here is just an on off. Hold it to turn on and off. Uh, while it's on, you can just press it once and it'll kind of go into a screensaver, just a battery saver. Next button down is the photo video. So you press it once for taking a photo and you hold it in to take a video. If you hold in the M button here, you go into the menu, use the up and down on these two buttons and you use the M to kind of press any selection. Bottom one here is a zoom. Mostly you would use a zoom to maybe try and identify the animals, to try and see if something is far away and you just have it faintly, you want to see a little bit closer. I have to say that it's a digital zoom, so it doesn't help that much. Maybe times two can help a little bit, but times four, times eight, I, I never use that. But a handy little thing to have anyways. The M button here as well is how you cycle through the four different views that you can use to see what's around you. They're sorted out so that you can cycle through these because one of them might work better in a different type of environment depending on what the environment is. One of them is white hot, so anything is hot has a body temperature will show white. We then have black hot, which obviously then anything showing hot or warm will be black. Then there's a fusion, and this is kind of a weird one where everything is kind of purplish, reddish, and anything that is warm will be yellow. The one I mostly use is red hot. So whenever it picks up something with heat, it'll show red, if there's enough of it. You'll often see that it's sometimes just white or something like that. Now the hot red is my default, but I'll cycle through every now and then just to see different things. I, sometimes I'll put it into black hot if I'm quite close, because if you've got a mammal or something like that, it's almost like watching it in black and white and you can see a bit more detail and stuff. So I kind of like that mode as well. But I think it just depends if you're in a cluttered environment, open, whatever's going to be best. So just cycling through it and trying to trying to see what's best for the environment is the way I've been using it so far. And you got manual focus on here. Now that's not something I have to change all the time. If I set it for something that's a little bit further away from me, that's usually fine. I don't have to keep changing it. Something that's very far away or very close, I may have to change that manual focus. It is pretty amazing to go out at night like this and starting to see what's actually in the forest here, see what makes these sounds. It opens up a completely different world. There's ducks in the forest because it's so wet. <laughs> Ooh. That's the owl flying. It's 
just sat down on the other side of the forest. That is really incredible. Just being able to pick out the owl just like that. Seeing it fly through the forest and then landing there. And you can just about see that between these two trees, you just about see this little red speck. But I can cycle through the different modes. And now you can see now it's white. That doesn't work very well. Now it should be black. That works really well actually. But very hard to make out what it is. There's a fusion. I think my favorite one here is the red hot. And you can see there's a little bit of red. And that is that is a tawny owl from you know it's a bit of a distance. There might be a hundred meters or so I think. Maybe a little bit less. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. Cool, so I'd say that was very successful. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that. Okay, I'm gonna keep walking a bit and see if we can see anything else. There's a deer in the forest. I kind of feel like the deer behave very differently at night here. It's almost like they don't it's almost like they know that I can't see them very well. Which is really cool. They just behave totally different. Kind of relax. I think one of the coolest things that I found with this though was going out in the middle of the night and there's a little bridge over a stream that goes to the lock right next to where I live. And I know that there's loads of beavers about, and we have loads of beaver activity outside our house. So I went up on this bridge at night, and I shined it down on the river, and sure enough, there was a beaver lying right there. I did not, I had no clue that it was there. It was pitch dark. It doesn't even know that I can see it, so it's behaving normally. Whereas had that been daytime, uh, it would have been, you know, it would have been gone in an instant. Good morning. Now, I'm gonna head out and try out the lynx for basically seeing if I can use it to inform my photography. So what I really want is to be able to see the deer way before they see me. They are very difficult to sneak up on. It can be very difficult to spot as well, especially in like a forest. And they just blend in. I'm hoping that this is gonna allow me to pick them up. Just spotted a weasel with the thermomonocular and managed to get a photo of it. First, just saw it running around the ground. I didn't really know what it was. I was looking for, I was scanning for deer, but then I was also looking for the small birds because I had some gold crests in these uh, gorse. And the thermomonocular is actually really good to just pick out the birds as well. And then, by just pure chance, I kind of look across the ground here and then just something slightly long you know small but long after I've used the monocular for a while I can definitely say that it is a game changer because it has helped me find wildlife that I would not have seen. What I mean by that is that, for instance, in this forest here, there is quite a bit of woodcock, uh, especially now in the winter months. There's also quite a few hares that rest up in the forest during the day. There's something lying 
on the ground over there. Might be a woodcock. Let's go check it out. So with this tool, I've been able to spot both woodcock and hares resting up in the forest here before they see me, or at least before they're, they get so nervous that they run away. I've also used this to find owls at night, and I can see this being a great tool for finding owls during the day, because they will sit in a tree and they will blend in, and they're really difficult to find. Even people who are really good at finding, finding owls will say that it's very tricky to find them. You have to spend a lot of time. Now, obviously, a tool like this isn't going to magically improve your wildlife photography, but I can say that it can put you in front of animals more often and giving you more opportunity to practice your wildlife photography. Uh, it's also a way to really understand more the behavior of animals. I love going out at night and actually watching the animals with this. Even though I can take a photo, trying to understand how they move through the landscape, what they do at night, is really interesting to me. It's just a naturalist and somebody who's interested in the natural world, but also something that can help me with wildlife photography, getting a better understanding of wildlife behavior. You know, a tool like this is a little bit pricey, so you know, if it's worth it for you, it's something you have to figure out. I absolutely love it. I'll put a link to this product on the Hikmicro website, so you can go on there, read more about it, and I'll also put a link to where you can pick up one for yourself. Uh, I'd love to know if you had one of these, what would you use it for? Let me know in the comments, and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.